Welcome to Rice TVX and the latest transmission of Stranger Than Fiction. And joining me on today's show is Kim Gogan, aka Kim Possible from Life Force. Now, this is actually my second interview with Kim. I'm gonna have the links down below and above for that first interview. And if you haven't checked that one out, I definitely encourage you to watch that one. I'm also gonna have links down below for the two previous interviews that I did with Tank, Stefan Rowe from Life Force as well. I do want to let everybody know before we get started that we were experiencing many technical difficulties while trying to record this interview. I've never experienced this with anybody else. I've interviewed a lot of different people, never experienced what I experienced today. It made this interview very difficult. It's a great interview nonetheless, but we had so many interruptions and technical difficulties. We have talked about doing multiple follow-ups, so make sure you stay in tune for that as well. But. Before we get into it, if this just happens to be your first time ever watching any of my videos, I do encourage you to check out and explore my channel. Make sure you're subscribed, smash that like button, and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with my videos as they come out. I encourage everyone to check out my Patreon channel where I post up exclusive content, you get early access to videos, and it's a way to support the channel directly. Be sure you're following me on Library and Odyssey, where I have backups of all of my videos and post up extra content. And check out Rice Radio, that is hosted on Anchor.fm. It's available on every major podcasting platform at Rice Radio, with new episodes coming out weekly. And in case you don't know, I am partnered up with Money Metals Exchange. And that means you can get a free half ounce of silver. All you need to do is go to MoneyMetals.com, be a first time buyer, purchase $100 or more, Use the promo code RICE, R-I-C-E, you get a free half ounce of silver, and it's an additional way to support the channel as well. I'm going to have links down below for everything I just mentioned, as well as everything we talk about on today's show. All right, joining me once again on today's show, Rice TVX, on today's episode of Stranger Than Fiction is Kim Gogan. Some may know as Kim Possible. She is involved with Life Force. Kim, I'm going to have links down below and above for that first interview that we did together. I'm going to try not to rehash on too much of that. So I really encourage people to check out that first interview that we did together. But thank you for accepting my invitation. And how are you doing today? I'm great. How about yourself? Doing great. Doing really good. Just uh, trying to stay as positive as I can, considering, you know, everything that's going on around the world, just being that change I want to see in this world and trying to set that example for others. So it's the best we it's can do at these times. It is crazy. That's for sure. It is. And so what I wanted to do today, as we talked before we started recording, is uh, kind of get some clarity on some things. Uh, clarity involving you, your past, and life force. And I guess it'd be more prudent to start off with life force stuff. Um, I've been studying a lot of things in regards to sovereignty, law, legal fiction. So in your words, and I know it's on the website and I'll do some screen sharing and everything that we talk about, I'll have links down below. What is the goal and purpose of life force and what is your role in life force? Sorry about that. I lost you for, for a second there. My, I'm sorry. Nobody wants me to record and say anything anymore. You have no idea. It took me seven times yesterday to get on Life Force. So um, Life Force essentially is the, I'd say, the frequency people talk about all the time. Um, it's also the God particle, I guess you would say. It's the life energy that exists within all of us, right? Mm-hmm. That's what life force actually means. So the intention of life force, and it was just something we, it's a name we came up with. Um, I did that with Tank, right? And there were others that ha also had the name life force, you know, for some other projects, which are very similar to ours for the last few years, right? Okay. So we don't own the name life force. It's just, it is what it is. We just thought it was a good representation of what we are and what we do. So the intention behind it was only to bring people together uh, that maybe have great technologies, new ways of farming, um, all different kinds of things that would restore this planet and restore humanity. So assemblies being one of those, councils being one of those. I mean, clearly our government is 
failing us at every turn, um, our purported leaders, right? So it's basically to empower people to grow together, to communicate with each other. That's all it really is. It's not a, we're not trying to get people to join a religion or follow me or anything like that. It's all about bringing people together for our freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have a global oppressor, we know that. And and for humanity's sake, you know, and we're hoping that they'll, they will emerge leaders from all over the world uh, because of life force, I guess, or without life force. It doesn't matter, right. make a difference as long as the job gets done. Okay. Well, the reason I wanted to ask it like that was because I wanted to clarify whether or not life force is trying to form a new government, trying to restore the Republic of the United States, what the no. deal, because there are some groups out there that have states assemblies that are trying to form governments, um, trying to form private member associations and things to that effect, which we'll kind of get into a little bit of that. But well, I, let, wanted to, I, I wanted to really specify that this isn't forming a government, a country or anything to that effect. And that you're not mm -hmm. the dictator, supreme ruler of Sid such deal. So yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Well, well, let's define what a government is supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't think that if we actually act like people, right, that we actually need to be governed. I think we should be self-governing. Right. Personally. I think that no one needs to tell me as an adult to get up and brush my teeth and to you know, clean my house and do all these things, right? And our house is pretty big. I mean, it's a big planet. It right? is. We need to clean our planet. I mean, that's pretty much a given. Um, we need to make sure that we are acting appropriately uh, with one another, right? Being mm -hmm. respectful of our differences and embracing our likenesses, right? If we all did that, we don't really need a whole bunch of people in some special city in a big house somewhere anywhere in the world, I think. It's an opinion. Uh, well, I agree. I agree. Um, but I'm not, so, quite, I'm not quite sure if everybody is on the same page and ready to self-govern and take, take accountability and responsibility for themselves and or even treat people how they want to be treated. I, this is a, a, something I definitely want to see happen, and I'm thinking very positively, but if we were just to all of a sudden say today, everybody's going to just self-govern, I think it would end up not being a great experiment per se, right at this moment where we are. So I agree with you. And, and we have a transition period that needs to happen, right? What we have going on right now is not working. I mean, if even let's just look at the U.S., right? You're in the U.S. Let's just take a look at the U.S. Um, have you seen our train systems? I haven't recently tried to look into our train systems now. Take a look. I mean, just take a look. Uh, nothing has changed since the 1930s. If you've ever been to Europe, have you seen their train systems? They look a little bit more upgraded and a little bit more techy compared yeah. to ours. I mean, I could run faster than our trains. <laughs> I mean, they're terrible. And, and they're so old, so antiquated. You know, as the train is passing across the road, I've sat there for two hours waiting for the train to pass. I mean, who put this together, you know? Maybe in 1930s it worked, but it, you know, when it was initiated, but it doesn't work now. Our highway systems, are they effective? I mean, let's take a look at bridges, roads, schools, our school, our educational system. You know, all these things are provided to us for quote unquote, our taxpayer dollars or for free, right? Right. But would you do that? If you, if you were given a uh, trillion dollars right now, let's just say someone dropped a trillion dollars in your account and said, hey, Chris, what would you do in the U.S. right now? What would you do? If I had a trillion dollars, I mean, I would obviously take care of number one, take care of me and my family, and then I would do what I can to help other people around me, my, my friends, um, not so close family, and then I've been in uh, homeless shelters. I've been in prison. So, I mean, if I can do something to be able to help bring positivity to other people's lives, um, I would try to do something as much altruistic as possible. I mean, literally for like one, I'm going to say this amount on purpose. Okay. So let's walk through it. 1.93 trillion. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So you wake up tomorrow morning and there's $1.93 trillion in your account. And of course we want to help people, right? But I mean, you know, we've got a, a large country in the US. Let's start at home, right? Because this is where you're from. So, okay, so you talked about homeless shelters. Do you believe that they're effective? Not all and not the way that they are now. Uh, it's not rehabilitating. It's more of just pacifying and keeping people in a system because the shelters mm -hmm. benefit by having the shelters full. So it's kind of a catch 22. You know, had to have somebody. Yeah, they get more funding. Right. It's sad, yeah. but it's the reality. What if you change the way they got funded? You know, Where what was, if you came yeah. up with semi-permanent homes um, and vocational training? you know, required to stay in that home instead of money. Um, you know, what if you had everybody participate in the cooking of the food, um, you know, like a community? Uh, mm -hmm. What if you help those kids, you know, that are all too often goes along with homeless parents, right? right. I'm sure you saw plenty of kids there. So what can we do to change the system? because the system that is there, even just on that level is so broken. We have no hope of helping those or giving people a leg up. Once you get that far down, it's so hard to pull yourself you know, up and out. I mean, even just from clothes to go to a job interview, you know, or something, right. you know? I agree, no, I agree. And, and that would be, you know, a way of definitely changing how things are done as opposed to just giving, uh, friends, people in your network, contracts, and them just worrying about the profit uh, when it comes down to it. So, I mean, um, I definitely like those incentivized models. Now, kind of going back to the idea of life force and not trying to form governments and, and things to that effect. We have groups, and I'm going to mention some by name. Uh, I know there's some animosity between some individuals and in some of these groups. Um, I know there's been a lot of negative talk um, from a lot of these people as well. Um, so we have American States Assembly having their states assemblies. Um, you have this Republic of the United States is claiming to be an interim government. You have the, the T-Row, the Reigns of Heaven, the United States government that claim they've done what they're doing. Um, Ken Cousins with Gemstone University and Pantera, the private member association a lot of these people talk about changing status. I want to get into status. I want to get into birth certificates. But since some of the things that these groups are trying to do don't really necessarily conflict with what Life Force is doing, I'd like to see a way, and I've mentioned this in interviews with some of these, some of the people I've mentioned and off the record conversations of how can there be collaborations, alliances formed, some sort of working together because Ultimately, we need strength in numbers. My whole philosophy is when enough people take a stand, nothing can stand against the people. And we need everybody not to be so divided, writing up little letters on websites, calling each other out on, on the craziest stuff. Because apparently, you know, not quoting anybody in particular, you're a living computer terminal. Really? Apparently. You know, okay. because your predecessor, M, was the inventor creator and controller of the artificial intelligence system i mean there is uh, no he we, actually wasn't but okay. we can and we can, and i do want to come back to that but that's the kind of in a sense things that we don't need when we're trying to bring people together we're dividing ourselves in in this sovereign freedom movement i don't mm -hmm. expect everybody to see everything eye to eye but the end goal is the same so I'm not sure why there's no collaboration is taking place. I know a lot of people think that someone's not doing something the right way. And if that's the case, why can't people have a civilized discussion about what they think is the right way and how they can meld all of it together? I don't, is there an answer? Do you, do you have no. an answer for that? Okay. Well, I'll give you my opinion because that's all I have, right? I, I, first of all, I don't really know many of the groups that you mentioned, okay. but I will tell you this. We called group of people an assembly, right? We called them that long before there was a republic, True. right? 
we've been, I mean, for 150,000 years, humans have been assembling, right? Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with the constitution, has nothing to do with the republic or the government or the corporation or anything, maritime, anything or anything else. It is just what people do. Something's messing with your sound, just so you know that. You got the, the weird gurgling thing going on again. Oh, again? It's, I mean, I, keep, I, I, guess I keep losing you also. So it's, it's probably, I don't know what it is. It's weird. Um, yeah, there it goes. Can, so you can't hear me right now? So let's change that. This is, uh, I've been dealing with things like this more and more with talking to people. I had some issues with Cyrus A. Parsa. Can you hear me? I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick. All right, I had to actually pause the video there because we had some extremely odd technical difficulties. Um, internet issues, I don't know, someone's trying to mess with this uh, conversation. I'm, I sent you a picture. I did a, um, while we had issues of you logging back in, it actually showed two of you. <laughs> so I'm not sure if there's something funny, like more funny going on than, than normal funny, but... Um, I, I wanted to go ahead and just get, get back to it. Um, we were talking a little bit about the idea of collaborations working together with some of these different groups, um, I guess. And then we can kind of move on to a few other things. Sorry. Okay. Um, we were talking about assemblies, right? Mm -hmm. And how everybody has a different idea of what, is, what an assembly is. Well, for us, right, I can speak for, for us, my, my own personal opinion of an assembly is a group of people getting together to make changes in their community. That's all it is. Okay. So it's uh, the community level, right? Starts at the community level and then works its way up to a, for example, state or provincial level, depending on where you are in the world. And then it moves its way up from there to a national level, right? And right. then hopefully a global level. That's all it really is. So, uh, for example, if you had a water problem or a sewage problem or something in your area and you solved it using a specific technology, wouldn't you want the world to be able to solve their problem with that specific technology too, if it worked? Yeah. Right? So it's all about sharing ideas and, and building. And it might not be the same person that always attends the national meeting. For example, if the national meeting is about water, then you would send your people that have been successful in developing infrastructure in your community about water, right? That's who you would send. You wouldn't send the person about the trash collection, right? right? As an example. So that's what an assembly means to me. It's just a group of people getting together, you know, addressing the key areas first, right? And then moving it up to a global level. How did we solve the hom homeless problem in this area? Well, you know, we found that in Nebraska, there was a great way to solve that problem. And here's how they did it. And why wouldn't they want to share that with everyone? No, I agree. And I like the idea of uh, kind of thinking globally, but starting locally. Um, and definitely, right. I like the idea of bottom up as opposed to top down, because that way we're, we're, we're doing exactly what you said. And it makes a complete sense. And so to, to kind of combine the questions with the groups and the birth certificate stuff, what are your thoughts on the birth certificate system as it stands that we are aware of uh, as far as it being fraudulent and what's changed, what okay. hasn't changed? What it, Because I know like from what you've explained is you have control of the financial back end of the world's assets. So well, that, and, and I can even, you know, I mean, I can give you some information. I'll give you some sheets. I'll take some screenshots of some pictures and stuff like that and show you where the money went okay. and how it worked, right? So you can put that in this video if you like. Yeah, I can definitely um, edit it in. Yeah, so here's how it started. So AB Corp, right, which is, you can look that up on the internet, AB Corp issues bonds. Initially, they issued money also. So they are also the printer of birth certificates. Is this the ANNA system? Well, it starts with the issuing of the actual certificate itself, right? Okay, okay so that company is AB Corp. 
It's one of the oldest American companies out there. So, okay. so before you turn 18 years old, you're, well, I mean, now, you know, we're starting to work at 14 and whatnot, but predominantly you're not considered a, you're not providing for your own self at that point. So your parents are providing for yourself and the government provides some services for you, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the other end of life, it provides a different service, right? Right. Okay. So as a citizen of the United States, you have access to free education. I didn't say it was good education, but you do, right? Mm -hmm. You also have the ability to walk on sidewalks. You have the ability to drive on roads, right? Once you get your driver's license. Right. You have the ability to apply for free state health care, right? Mm-hmm. You also have the ability to apply for food assistance should you need it. Right. You have the ability to apply for um, uh, state assisted housing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the United States, most of these services are provided to you by the Ways and Means Committee. Right. Okay. Well, everybody talks about the Treasury Department when you talk about birth certificates but everything went through the Ways and Means Committee. So the idea when it started was that, well, we can issue a bond against your birth certificate. It then goes to the Association of Numerical Numbering Agency in Brussels. Which is the ANA system, yeah. Okay. Which is the ANNA system, which then registered you or that birth certificate number into that system as an employee of the system, unfortunately, that's what it became. Right. So they would issue a bond against that. Then that bond was then transferred into the backside system or into the trust. And then the money would come out and the money was supposed to go directly through the ways and means committee and into socio humanitarian government programs. And that's how they provided you with free education. So it started out about 90% of that money went into all these programs that we just talked about, including, for example, the Coast Guard or the Pentagon or uh, the police departments to keep you safe, right? Now you're talking about the money that from the bonded surety from us individually, correct? Yes, sir. Is, you're saying it's been used for government services. It was used nine in the very beginning. It was about 90% of the money was used for the following things I just meant, or the previous things I right. just mentioned. Right. Okay. Um, now these are all things that you as a person that does not work and does not pay taxes have partaken in. Right. Right. Uh, before they started privatizing prisons. If you were to go to prison, there was also a bond issued. Uh, it's a, a million dollars, I think it was, per indictment. So if you were stuck on 10 charges, right? You got a, a accused of 10 charges, then that's $10 million. And that money was supposed to go to house you and clothe you and provide water and a roof over your head and electricity and all the things while you sit there in prison. It's the same thing as the birth certificate program. That's what it was supposed to be for. Did the, was the Department of US Treasury involved? Not at all. Okay. Nope, not even a little bit. So, I mean, obviously you're saying this is a fraudulent system. I mean, has this been yeah. something that's been taken care of? Uh, is this something that is being addressed? By 2007, okay, about 10% of the money, the, the, the tide completely flipped, right? The, the tables turned. About 10% of the money was going into socio-humanitarian programs, education, and other things that you as a citizen could partake in for free. Um, and the rest of it was all going out to big corporations and pork. I call it pork, right? They feed the pigs. Right. No, they, that's really what they call it. And, and all of these things which were not beneficial to you as a citizen. So therefore, by March of 2007, that program was completely annihilated. That was the end of it. Yeah, it's so, just done. It's just done. So, I mean, I, and it wasn't really, I wasn't saying this in regards to... Um, 
a monetary thing, but more of what puts us under the control and jurisdictions of the nation states and service corporations. Like in, for example, United States, the 14th amendment, a lot of people are saying being a U.S. citizen. Yes, you can get the perks and benefits of the service corporation with the things that you mentioned prior, but at the same time, you're putting yourself under the jurisdiction and control of them as well. So for the people that want to get away from that jurisdiction, especially with all these mandates and, and things they're trying to do on state levels with masks and things like that, closing down businesses, mm -hmm. for someone to change their status potentially would potentially take them out of those jurisdictions. Is that something you don't agree with that? Nope. Not even a little bit. Can you explain why? Okay. So let's go through, I, I always do something. Um, I call it the what if, right. Okay. Or the 50 factor. So I take out every single decision that I make personally on the daily basis and figure out 50 steps out, if possible, how that's going to affect my end goal. So in this particular instance, you are concerned that the governing bodies of the states, right, mm -hmm. the cities, and federally are infringing on your personal rights. Right. And you want to find a way how to get out of it. Is that what Correct. you want to do? Right? As it negatively affects you. Essentially, okay. yes. All right. So give me one way you think that that would help. Like, how, how would you go about that? So you're saying you would exit the system, right? Well, that's the question. I mean, like, I'm, these are the things that I'm researching to find what is the path to take. I haven't made any choice. Any, I haven't jumped in anything to this well, point. Well, others have, I'm, though, right? They so have. let's take a look. Okay. So number one, you would give up your driver's license. They talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I want to be very clear about this. So everybody does this UCC thing, right? That's like the thing to do, right? It's, yeah, it's but unfortunately, of, it's UCC goes directly back to the ANNA system and everything that you file as an asset in UCC goes directly back to that system. So you just, all you did was go in a big circle. Okay. So that didn't really help you any. Okay. Now, with the government, right? They're heavily funded or were, right, in order to do what they do. That's why I mentioned the amount $1.93 trillion. What would you do? Right. right. Because that's the amount that they're asking for right now, $1.93 trillion. And Janet Yellen made an announcement last week. I don't know if you saw this, that they found the Treasury Guarantee Fund with $1.1 trillion. Well, she woke up this morning and after she made the announcement and found out it doesn't exist anymore. Because where did that guarantee fund come from? Where did it come from? The same place that your birth certificates went, my friend, because it was supposed to take care of you. Right. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to take care of the government. It was supposed to take care of you. And so they found out that it doesn't exist. And now everybody's screaming at Miss Yellen. So that's what's going on this morning. But as far as the um, cycle of things here, what we're trying to achieve is we want to be able to make our own decisions. And in regards, like, for example, to our health, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we need a passport to travel to another country. True. If you go into Canada, Mexico, you can use a passport card, which really doesn't make a difference. It's still an identification. All right. So let's take that away. Let's say we give that up. We file the filings and whatever else everybody's saying, insert process here, right? Now, all you did was give up your right and your freedom to walk into the airport and go to another country. What did you get? Did you gain some freedom there? Not from that perspective, no. Okay. You give up your driver's license. You can still drive a car. I mean, that's a learned thing, right? You learned how to drive a car. You can still drive a car. But you're going to be constantly driving. And what happens if you get pulled over? What happens if you accidentally speed, run a red light, get into an accident? And it might not even be your fault. It could be somebody else's fault. Now what? Now, it's going to take time. It's going to take you time and a lot of explaining of what you're doing and possibly being arrested. Yeah, pretty much. Driving without a driver's license, right? Well, we might not agree with that in the future. And that's what the job of a council assembly 
or a grouping of people getting together to solve issues in your community? What is required? What do you want to do? That's all it is. Stop talking about the Republic. Let's go back to the days of the Republic, okay? Let's go back to the 17 and 1800s in the United States. Okay. So, so this would have been shortly after the Indian genocide. The French and Indian Thanksgiving. War. Yeah. Th no, it's Thanksgiving Day, right? Okay. And, and now, now we're all getting together, right? A bunch of people that came over on a boat all got together and decided how we were going to do things. Now, what were these people besides a group of people? They also had an affiliation with an office in London. The You're main office. The founding fathers or which, yep. which? Okay. Who were they? Are we talking about like individually, like your George Washington, your Thomas Jefferson, your George yeah. Mason? And what, and what were they besides the founding fathers of the quote unquote United States or the Republic, as you call it? I do well, know a lot of them are known to be known Masons. There we go. Now let's talk about the Freemasons, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. What do they do? They were formed by something called the Order of the Black Sun. You can look that up too, if you don't know what that is. And what do they do? I'm not really familiar. You know, as far, I mean, as far as what do the Masons do? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, in a, in a sense, they... The, on a local end, they do exactly what uh, we're talking about. I'm not really sure why it's telling me that my um, Zoom meeting is going to be ending in 10 minutes. I've not had this problem before. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to welcome to do interviewing Kim <laughs> lately. This is how it's been everywhere. I mean, I've even had a hard time getting out news and everything else. So I apologize for that. Oh, no, no. It's, I mean, I've been, I interviewed Cyrus A. Parsa recently and he's, you know, tried to sue Google and written books about artificial intelligence. And I've had a lot of issues with that, uh, with that interview as well. Um, I was expecting there to be issues. I just wasn't there expecting there to be these kind of issues. And, and while I'm seeing this, I, I would love for someone to be able to create an alternative to something like Zoom for people to be able to utilize. We need to have more freedom, patriot oriented platforms that aren't Chinese owned and not doing things like this. Like we are working on it, just so you know. Um, yeah. yeah, we are working on it. Uh, we do have a new Life Force app coming out uh, soon, which actually looks just like um, the uh, face people with the book, right? Okay. Um, and so it's got a lot of different things in there. It's like got groups, you can form together, you can stream live, you can do all kinds of things on there, right? Um, we also have space on our channel for something called banned. So if you've been banned by the traditional platforms, you can put all your videos up there and you can make them free if you want, you can charge if you want, you can do whatever it is you wanna do um, for your specific videos. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. And about five or six minutes we'll I'll have to pause and set up another link and send it to you and oh no <laughs> start all the way back over so we because I can't I can't extend this meeting out because of what's going on in the end of zoom but um so you're saying that there's no necessary reason for anyone to change their status in any sort of capacity private membership well, yes. association or any of those things yes and no okay why do you want to be private membership? Isn't that what that, that, that's what the elites did? Do you just want to be the next group of elites? Is that what you're trying to do? Or are you trying to be the next group of representatives in that Capitol building place where they all go and they talk all day long? They're well, native, more of a, no more action, of a, talk only. A network of self-sovereign, self-governing people who just support each other in that stance because I can't be self-governing living in the United States right now because there are some things the government doesn't agree with in my self-governing. Uh, yeah, but there is one thing you can do. What's that? You can stop causing division between everyone and try to say it's your way or the highway, right? Mm -hmm. You have your personal views on things. I have my personal views. There's nothing wrong with having a difference, in, a difference of opinion, but at the end of the day, it's all about 
basically the government does what the government does. The more we get away from government services and become self-governing, right? The faster your path is to freedom, period, end of story, no matter how you look at it. So, so you say get away from government services versus um, trying to rebuild and, re or, and have a new government. Um, what do we need them for? Like right now, yeah, okay. For the first time in my life, I actually pay attention to something they have to say. Just for the last year. Okay. The reason why is because I don't really want to wear a mask anymore. I don't want to follow these stupid rules. And I certainly don't want to listen to falsies, fa falsies, let's call them falsy, right? Falsies, uh, a version of science as it relates to my personal health and wellness. Right? Right. So, you know, these are things that we should be able to take on personally. But if we had options, we wouldn't need to concern ourselves, right? What if you well, had a just, different grocery store to go to? It just seems like the government is that one thing that's definitely hindering a lot of progress. And if you could change that, it would help everything change a lot quicker. It seems like, and I agree with how you're saying. You're never going to change those people. You're never going to. You're well, never going to get them to listen to you. You're never going to get them to comply. I what about the fact for... that these people are being arrested and taken out? And what about the What about that? Not by the government. Okay. Epstein has a great life now. He's over in Iceland, chilling with the Google people. I mean, these people getting arrested for these people is a joke. They all commit fake suicide and go out the back door and live fine. They're just cannon food. They're to make you, the people, believe that this person is an enemy because they couldn't hide the fact that what, what he was doing from the people anymore. And they were probably more concerned with you killing him than they were putting him into prison. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, that's what I'm wondering if, you know, if people are going to start doing like, you know, if you look at in Mexico, when they get upset with their president or government, they burn and tear things down. So, I mean, it's it's, you know, it's it's a very interesting time to be alive, and that's the reason why I'm asking. Mexico, these. don't you huh? remember 2020? Oh, here in the United Ferguson States in 2014. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But that's not like going and burning the White House down. Going, I mean, and even the storming of the Capitol, which I was there that day, not a part of that storming, but even the storming of the Capitol was nothing compared to what some other countries have done to their governments. I mean, they straight up overthrew the governments. Yep. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not encouraging violence, but we're at a point where there needs to be some sort of resolution, some remedies, in my opinion. So what I want to do is kind of take this moment to pause the video and um, yeah, I'm going to pause the video real quick. Okay, so we are back. I uh, had to start another link and another meeting. Um, this has been one of the most difficult interviews I've tried to record. It's totally messed up my, my flow. I kind of get in a little groove and it's totally messed that up. And if, if this is your day every day, I don't know if I would be able to handle it without letting that come across and um, let my emotion show. I would be really angry, I think. You know, if this is all they got for us, then it's a good day compared to the rest of my life. So it's petty, though, it, when you really get down to it, it's petty. Um, well, it's meant to frustrate you. Yeah, because, I mean, the more you get frustrated, the more you, you tend to find people that fall off the path um, because of um, they just feel like it's uh, pointless because they're going to have to keep fighting. And you know, that's the point of change. If you really truly want to be the change, it's not an easy thing. It's not an easy path by any means. OK, so to continue on where we were kind of at, uh, we talked a little bit about status, um, talked a little bit about governance. We talked a little bit about the groups. Um, what I do, what I'd like to ask real quick is, uh, I've heard something, I think in one of the life force meetings about the U S national debt being paid off. Can you elaborate on that? Is that correct? Am, am I correct in that? Um, there was a couple of times that things were paid. So there was a negotiation during the Trump administration, Trump administration, uh, that took place because of what was going on at the time geopolitically, where the it was 1.479 trillion 
in on ledger, not Chinese elders or anything, but debt owed from the US government to the country of China, right? These okay. are actually issued treasury notes, not the historical documents or anything like that. And we offered to pay that off. There was a reason for that. Um, and it was done. So they okay. responded back about five o'clock in the morning, China time. Um, it was done with Trump on the line. He knows who did it. Very well knows who did it. But, you know, there's when always was interference. This in time frame. So it wasn't just recently. Three was... years ago. Okay. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking this was... Ago? something more recent, I apologize. No, and then the uh, Federal Reserve debt, 196 trillion uh, was also relieved and the treasury notes were sent back to the Department of Treasury paid in full. And I see, I don't understand why everybody is suffering, uh, especially here in the United States with um, loss of jobs, loss of businesses. I uh, do. Well, what, 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 go ahead, tell me, please tell us all. <laughs> Because the government is a body unto itself. That and they we're not don't a part really of. Care. No. As long as you keep paying your taxes and keep paying them more money. And, and when you think about it, really, you know, if you're a paycheck earner, right? Mm -hmm. How much of your paycheck goes back to them? Oh, yeah. And I'm not, a third to a quarter of your paycheck a year. Way more. Straight. No way. I'm going to go with 90, 95%. Tell you if what. you're taking like inflation and all the other things that kind of go into play, but, but yeah, I'd love no. to hear this. How many Johnson and Johnson products do you have in your cabinet? How many Pfizer medications or Moderna or whatever have you purchased? How many things in your home are from one of their corporations? Right. No, I mean, we're, we're, this is a, a perfect example of us being debt based slaves, a hundred percent. And that's where I talk about the ideas of changing the governance models that we have, which, you know, that's where I mentioned some of those other groups. Okay. So you have, you have an iPhone. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know, I know all of our money is going to basically pay all the 1% on, and all, it's going all back. And that that's part of that debt system. It's, you know, that we have it's to, we have to system. be a part of. And, and obviously, I mean, the way that the system was designed in the past, from what I'm understanding, it was a harvesting system. Whereas what you're recreating or bringing to life is a life force system that's more beneficial to humanity. It's not harvesting the energy. It's using the energy for a better purpose. And you talk about having the highest levels of clearance. Uh, you talked about things like neutralizing the Vatican, taking away the sovereign status of the city of London, Vatican City, District of Columbia, Tel Aviv. What's stopping you from like going on public television, sharing your restoration plan? What's stopping you from, if you have the highest level of clearance, going into the UN with a bunch of news reporters and just like disclosing this information to the world? What's really preventing that from taking place? Who runs the UN? Good question. I'm not really actually sure who runs the UN, but I mean, okay. if you if you have the highest level of clearance, I mean, is that something that mm -hmm. they recognize that that they recognize, or how does that work? Okay, so the steering committee for the UN is made up of Rockefeller, Rothschild, and a bunch of these people. Okay, mm -hmm. there's six main families, six main seats, and they are the ones that control the United Nations. Period. End of story. All their corporations are the ones that you have to buy from every time you do a loan with the World Bank or the IMF or anything else. And if they don't like you in your country and you happen to be stepping out of line, they're going to devalue your currency to the point where you can't even move. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Okay. So the steering committee of the UN is currently still, how do I say this, posing as they are still affiliated with the trust. Therefore, they are running under unknown country or no name country, which is in a lot of the United Nations agreements. So that being said, um, they don't want anyone to know that they technically don't have those seats because they're still barking out orders all over the world, right? Right. So could I walk in there 
sure, my clearance level would allow me to walk in the front door, no problem. I could walk into any meeting anywhere in the UN, sure. But what do you think these people are going to do? Well, I mean, if you showed up there with people and you showed up there with news agencies, I mean, and really explained which to- Which ones would you like to call, CNN? Independent. We don't have to go with the big- We could. I mean, there's ways of being able to get this information out, especially with the internet, blockchain technologies, and all these different tools that we have available for us to utilize. I just would like to see a lot more action taking place. And I know you've been at this for quite some time, and I'm sure you would like to see some, have some of this load taken off of you. You know, and if we start moving forward, I think that, because I feel well, like you're wearing more hats than you need to wear at this time. And I would love to get rid of some of them. So the we created United Network News, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're now putting out news pretty much every single day and we're getting there. Now, we also have um, in, been in contact with some independents, right? Um, the Epoch Times and a few other smaller channels. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get information out, um, talking to you, right? Oh, I agree. Um, you know, we can do interviews and talk to other people if you want to do that. But really, this isn't about me. This is all about you. Right? Yeah, but you're technically the one that's going to be able to make it possible. It, I'm really not. Aren't you the chosen representative controlling this financial system? I'm working on the front side. I have the back side, but that's only one key factor. Okay. The deep state took control of the world in the following ways. Number one, financial. Okay, the Fed is in a meeting as we speak right now. Right. I know about that, right? Um, number two, military. You have a, a bunch of Black Sun or Jesuit generals that are behind the scenes, names you would have never, ever heard of, and they work in cooperation with the Russians and the Chinese and the British and the Iranians and everyone else and Israelis, they're all in it together. Okay? Right. They create theater for us, the people. So as long as the militaries are listening to those people and not listening to us, it's not about our protection in any way. It's about doing what it is they're told to do. Now that's on the highest level. That's not on the soldier's level, right? Okay. So nothing, I mean, I am all for helping veterans and everything because what they've done to them is wrong. And a lot of them will probably be able to come on your show and tell you, hey, I protected a pipeline somewhere. Right? Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. All right. Then you have intelligence, right? Another key factor misinformation, false flag attacks, wrong information, and countries make wrong decisions. Then you have the political sector, okay? As long as we're waiting for the president of whatever country, the Banana Republic, the United States, or otherwise, to make a different decision to become the, whether it's the 18th or 19th president or the 40 somethingth president, or does it really matter? Honestly, I mean, they're so disconnected from, our, from us. Right. They don't have a clue what we need. And has one of them in the last several hundred years built a bridge, right? Actually created a healthcare system that works for us, Obamacare, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's premiums where they were priced out of the market, nobody's got healthcare anymore, right? And now right. it's, now we've got this, uh, how do I say it, this, uh, thing that's going on, right? That's creating us to lose our businesses, lose our jobs, um, you know, not be able to leave your home without, or, or if you can't leave your home, or if you want to go to a grocery store, you're going to wear this, right? I'm trying not to say these things because I know you broadcast on YouTube. It's so, fine. It's fine uh, though. Well, they kick me out of everywhere. I get a lot like of shadow that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing, right? Um, but anyway, the point is, is that Okay, so then you've got the political sector, right? So the financial part is only, and then you got media, okay? People are controlled by the media. Whether you like it or not, right? The way yeah. someone looks at you in the store, if you're wearing, like, just have an experiment, you know? Do it yourself. Go out and um, go grocery shopping in a burka. Tell me yeah. what the reaction is, right? 
people are going to look at you differently. Now, if you go back 50 years, speak Russian. Oh, yeah, they used to be really uh, be, people used to call Russians commies and things to that effect. Oh, we were in the middle of the Cold War, right? So they're, yeah. they're just evil. They're going to just walk in there and, you know, bombs are going to come flying out their orifices, right? So it doesn't matter. Every generation has a boogeyman, right? And still to this day, if you meet up, if you speak Russian and you there's a bunch of people that are about 60-ish or so standing around you, they're going to panic. They're going to full on panic. I remember Especially telling if someone. If they're big yeah. and they've got tattoos on their head and stuff like that. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, doesn't really even matter. I mean, you could be a little old lady, you know, a babushka, they call it, right? So you could be a little old grandma and you she starts speaking Russian. They're going to think, oh, she's a Russian spy. She's one of those sleeper spies they talk about on TV. You know, she's been here a long time. <laughs> you know, they're going to start thinking all these weirdo thoughts in their head, right? But these are the five main factors that control the world. That is how the deep state got here, the Illuminati, the order, however you want to call it. That's how they got here. So we as people, the 99%, right? You want your freedom, right? You want to be able to govern yourselves. Do you want to be able to do all these things? Look at who created your system. All of you that want to go back to the Republic, it really wasn't that great. And it was created by a bunch of Freemasons that are known on the internet everywhere and all media is to be our enemy. But yet you think that that was better because why? Because somebody already created a system for you to buy into communism, a system, yeah. democracy, a system, you know, uh, the Catholic Catholicism, religions, a system. It's a system that you have to live by. And they're all human experiments. So the first thing you have to do is recognize the fact that if it is a system, let's go back to that system. Let's go back to this system. If our system just did this, right? Why don't you just wipe the slate clean and say, what kind of system works for everyone? No, I agree. I mean, in a way, I kind of say, why are we even hanging on to old traditions? Like, what does flag etiquette matter? Why does Vattel's Law of Nations that was written so long ago, why is it relevant today? Uh, why do we have to honor any bloodline? Any, any of that sure. stuff? Why can't we just all start from scratch and all be equal but again then then you have you you don't you, you know you gotta have these controllers in the world and, and it's I, when i first got into these these uh, ideas and stuff that we're talking about my initial thought was get rid of the one percent it's you know and because it will better the 99 percent. is that the right thing to say or do is it is it on me to say to take out 1% to make the rest of the world better? Because then maybe from that 99%, another 1% will rise up. And it's just this ongoing cycle, you know, which is the reason why I say that, you know, in today's day and age, we're not ready for that self-governance. Um, but it's a, there's a lot of confusion as to everything that's also going on today with people questioning what's happening with Trump, his administration, um, Biden, his administration, um, our country being bankrupt. Tank mentioned in the last interview that we did together, which I'll have linked down below for both those interviews with Tank, 10 battleships disappearing. If these things, yeah. if, if, and, and, and you mentioned the others, and you know, which I'm going to assume are extraterrestrials, if you have access to all this, why not in the theatrics that are going on around the world with things that we're addressing and the things that you talk about in the meetings? Why not? Well, I don't, okay. I don't see in why. In order why to completely. Okay. When something goes down, something else is going to take its place. Inevitably. Right. It's going to happen. Right. House tomorrow. Inevitably, something else is going to go in that spot. Okay, so you take percent, boom, they're gone. Let's just say they're all gone. Okay. Now, what are we gonna do? I don't have the answers, and and I and I can't say that I, it would it would be very egotistical of me to even try to come up with the answers. I think this is something that needs to be done collectively. You know, and this is why I mentioned awesome. you lost sound with me. Still, I'm gonna pause the video again. <laughs> Okay, unpausing the video. 
uh, apparently, <laughs> my, no, no, it's, you don't have to apologize. Uh, for people who are watching, apparently my sound dropped out and Kim couldn't hear anything that I was saying. So um, shout out to whoever is, uh, or whatever is messing with my freaking interview here, man. Um, what is your problem? It's, it's frustrating. I'm trying to conduct an interview here and somebody is interrupting this and it's making it very difficult. Uh, again, I don't know how you well, do this. Let's go back to what we were saying. We were talking about the 1% goes down. Something else has to take its place, right? Right. There has to be a system that's going to take its place. It doesn't matter if that's the 99% or another group of elitists, right? Or the bloodline of, you know, Nefertiti. I mean, come on, people, right? It needs to be us. That's all I'm saying. It needs to be made up of the 99% and we all need to come forward and form a system that works for every person, plant, animal, and the planet. We need to do the work. It's time for you to do the work, right? Yeah. So I can only hold up so many different things, but this, but okay, so I can stop certain things from happening and I can start certain things happening, but then what? You know, all of you people, I mean, we've got so many issues with assemblies not agreeing with assemblies and people wanting an old system and people wanting a new system and people don't like each other. And then some guy says it's my way or some lady says this is the way to do it. it it's not the, the way to do it is the way you choose to do it. Now, the only reason why I mentioned ratifying and registering assemblies is because in the world, as far as, as long as we have been existing, we have had some kind of representation from different land masses. Okay. Started out as five tribes from the entire planet, different colored people, doesn't really matter, people from everywhere, right? The original tribes. Now we morphed into kings and queens, right? Okay. And we went from kings and queens to then we had governments and they tried all kinds, you know? Um, and now here we are today, right? So we've got the democracy thing going on, you know, in some of the world, we've got socialism, socialism and communism still in existence. And right now there's a global push to go back to communism because why it's more restrictive, I guess, and keeps us under better control. But the control, if you want it, you just have to take it. It's a perception. It is, it is. I mean, um, there's a lot of things that we can do to, take power away from central banks and government. I mean, here in the United States, I know you've heard it before in, in your life. We're around the same age. Um, there is a lot of people talk about on a specific day, we're not going to go and get gas from any gas station. If everybody does this, it's going to affect the oil industry and blah, 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 blah. We can't even get on the same page to do something like that. I it's, know, that's what you I'm know? trying to say. That is humanity's problem. But, but I think 2020 started to be a little bit of a catalyst to change that because now you're seeing all these different groups and stuff. I mean, I know that you've been kind of in a sovereign movement for quite some time. Can you still, can you hear me still? Do yes. I sound, okay. I want to make sure the sound didn't go out again. Did there the sound go. go out? Just for a second. Okay. <laughs> this is the most, uh, this, so when I told you, I want to talk to you afterwards, this is going to make sense after we're done talking, um, what I want to talk about because of this, okay. uh, because of how everything has been done with our communication being interrupted, which is uh, very, very disheartening. So, um, I want to try to talk to some people I know, and I do want to talk to you more about some of the things that you're building, um, Obviously, we can't cover everything in this interview. What I guess I'd like to move on to, um, I'm trying to, I have so many questions, but some of them seem like because of what's going on, it's kind of irrelevant for me to ask because of uh, the restoration plan that you have. Is it available for people to see? We are putting together a website, right? Um, that will define what restoration is, but I also wanted people to define what restoration is in their community, okay? We don't all need the same thing. Um, some places need deserts, right? A, a restoration, right, of the deserts. In other words, we didn't have deserts thousands of years ago. We now do, right? It's a problem. Okay. 
Um, we need good food, nutritious food. Everybody should have an opportunity, whether or not they choose it, to have shelter, right? Uh, we have oil that, that has been spilling off the coast of Nigeria, is destroying their farmlands. It's in the news. You can take a look. And it's been, been like that since the late 70s. You know, uh, same things going on in Bolivia. Uh, so we have a lot of cleanup to do. Now, everything that we do, whether it's here in the States or it's there in China, it affects all of us as a whole, right? We're one unit and we have to start thinking like that. What are the ramifications to a change, a major change? What if we got away from fossil fuels totally? Yeah. And we should at some point, right? But we have to replace all those jobs, all those people that work there. We have to create another vehicle, another way to get around, right? Which is all entirely possible, but we have to start. Right now, we don't have an alternative, but that's on you. It's not on me. What, you want me to build cars too and new trains and everything else? I mean, yeah, I've got some pretty cool formulas and stuff like that, but I'm not the end all be all. And if you guys don't step up and start to assemble in some way, shape, or form, call it the Council of Twinkies. I don't care. Just get together, <laughs> identify the needs in the community, and source out the things that are going to solve these issues. Prioritize from the greatest need first, right? Mm -hmm. The emergency situation, and go on down. And stop talking about their laws. They made them for us. They're not their rules. They're our rules. You see, they're not the same. So if you think you're going to get those one percenters on their, when they don't even follow our laws, they're above our laws, right? They're the monarchs or whatever, the kings of kings, the right. lord of lords. I've got 65 Jesus incarnates and 140 something chosen ones. And I mean, it's dragging this and, and the king of that. And I'm related to the biblical character X. You know, I mean, come on, people, just get over it. It's that 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 was a past if it is a thing. And what are you doing right now? No, I agree, because the problem that I've noticed, uh, especially over 2020 with uh, the alphabet movement and all the patriots and stuff is people were really looking for a leader, someone to save them. Um no matter what the groups are, there's always this one figurehead leader. And, and in this sense with life force, that's you. And that's why I asked like what your role was with life force. But ultimately when you think about this and you break down, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's a really crazy thing to think about people looking at needing somebody else to save them when all of the things that we need are within ourselves. And so <laughs> individually we can make change we can be a part of the change and then collectively you know so individually we have power but collectively we have unlimited power we can change the entire world when we do it together but it's all that that division uh, that we've had that's been separating us and and then like as you're seeing in the assemblies people are having their different viewpoints there's tribe kind of like tribalism going on in all the assemblies and then that's happening in all the other groups so then you have this sovereign freedom movement's already divided by these different groups. And then the different groups have divisions within themselves. It's just absolutely crazy. And it's, it's, it makes me think some of these groups and I can't say who, cause I haven't been able to determine this are purposely putting out misinformation and disinformation, like controlled opposition to get people to be so confused. Cause the more that you go down this path, this path of sovereignty and learning about the SESTE KV, the, the birth certificate system, status change, legal fiction, law, the more it gets confusing, the more there's no clarity at all with anything that's going on. Have you found this to be the case on your end? Oh, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I've had to pause this video more times than I think I can count. No, I can actually count that high. I really can, I promise you, but I've had to pause it way too much. Me and Kim just got off the phone, talked a little bit about something that we're going to be potentially doing in the future. So I'll keep people up to date because of everything that's been going on with this particular conversation and all the interruptions, we're just going to go ahead and end the interview. What I'm going to do is real quick, just give Kim a, a chance to kind of give her final thoughts. We will have some more content coming together, me and Kim. So just stay tuned how that will happen. I, I will keep people up to date. Um, I appreciate your time, Kim. Do you have any final thoughts for this particular conversation? Um, my final thoughts are, you are the change. You are the government. You are, we're not overthrowing anything. We're looking for you to step up and start realizing if it's going to happen, if we are going to fix this planet that we live on, it has to come from you. I love it. I love it. And since you said that too, I'm going to um, send you information uh, I'm not affiliated with any of these things. I want to send you some information about two different potential ideas that may be helpful to the state assemblies um, for localization. That would be Freedom Cells. I think um, I think this website might be freedomcells.com or .org, but it's Freedom Cells, S or C E L L S. Any ideas that you're forming these local communities? Um, so it's also a network. So I could see some really good parallels there. Also, I interviewed uh, Ammon Bundy and um, pretty sure you're familiar with him. So he's got this thing that he's doing called People's Rights, peoplesrights.org, I believe, or .com, but I'll have the correct links down below for Freedom Cells and People's Rights. But People's Rights is a network and it's just networking people in the local areas, just connecting up people so they have local resources. So it would be an additional tool that I think would help on all the different states assemblies. It doesn't, it's completely in line with everything that everybody's doing. So if it's potentially possible, I'd like to maybe introduce you to um, Ammon as far as the people's rights stuff. I would and love then, to. And then I'd love to send you some information on freedom cells. Um, it's kind of like seasteading in a sense, but doing it on land and just forming your local, your local micro communities. And then forming a bunch of micro communities and connecting those micro communities up and just having a, a support network. I, I'm actually very familiar with why they did that to the Bundys too. Well, that's something I would love to talk to you about another time, because I mean, that, that was a definitely a travesty. And I got to say that what Cliven and um, Ammon and his brothers did to stand up against the government is definitely something that people should use as an example um, it didn't start off with people having a, a gun standoff. It started off with uh, trespass by the government and the government wouldn't respect their rights. So they made sure that they were upholding their rights. That's the point. If you want to look at the founding father documents and the second amendment in our bill of rights, that is the point of forming militias, having firearms is to be able to correct our government if the government needs to be corrected that was one of that was one of those reasons that's why the militias weren't supposed to be connected to the government and weren't supposed to be connected to the military it was supposed to be a checks and balance system that is clearly broken so thank you again kim uh i apologize to everybody i apologize to everybody for you know who's watching this for how this interview got all discombobulated um congratulations to whoever intercept it but where there's a will there's a way uh there are going to be links down below for everything we talked about make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you subscribe to uh project speak project i keep wanting to say project speak because of the website make sure you su subscribe to the speak project web um, youtube channels speak project one and two and i'm going to have links down below for united network news and life force and everything we talked about in today's episode and as always i encourage you to be the change by practicing change Absolutely.